there's that but we've got the proof uh six arc barrel here so this should be this should be a lot of fun and I, i'm i know this barrel is going to hammer because proof barrels do hammer hey guys welcome back to precision rifle network podcast making this one another video style podcast so you'll hear it on the podcast on all your audio sources but also be seeing it in video form because I just always need more content. So uh, you'll see the camera switching between a couple different angles. Uh, of course, you can leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the multiple camera angles. I'm just using two this time instead of three. Uh, but it should keep things just a tiny bit more lively. Um, so I've got kind of an agenda to talk about today. And there's quite a bit. So I'm going to jump right into it because it's been two weeks probably since I recorded. So I apologize to those of you who have been regular listeners I mean to get these done at least once a week. Sometimes life just gets in the way. <laughs> I wish the podcast was all I had to do. I've got so much to do. But anyway, uh, let's launch right in. So a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, I signed up for an NRL 22 match. It's a local um, 22 match, uh, club match, basically. And they typically follow the NRL 22 monthly match you know, rules, guidelines, whatever. And then the match directors typically add two, three stages in on top of that that are kind of their own creation. And so this was no different. Signed up. I thought, ah, this would be fun. Plus, I squatted with um, with Josh from Pursuit of Accuracy. And super good dude. I'm glad he's spending a little bit of time in Missouri here because I'm getting to know him a little bit and hang out with him a little bit. And uh, anyway, if you're not privy to his YouTube channel, the guy does all kinds of 22 long rifle content. He's very knowledgeable about that, so you should go check him out on YouTube. Um, so, been hanging out with him a little bit. Been getting some tips on 22 long rifle long rifle stuff. Thought a squad with him. This will be a fun day. So, I actually met with him on Thursday of that week. The match was going to be on Saturday, and we got together and um, we were just kind of going back and forth about like just how wiped out, how tired we were, how busy things have been. You know, he's in the military, so he was stationed here, and he's been—I don't know what they've been working on, but he's been working like a dog. And I was super tired the day we met on Thursday. Well, it came down to like Friday night, the night before the match. I just really wasn't feeling super good, but I thought. Uh, hopefully my headache will go away, you know, after some sleep. Well, I wake up Saturday morning and I'm getting ready. I'm like, ah, still got a headache, you know, but I thought ah, as soon as I get up and around, I'll take some, some meds and I'll get some coffee and my headache will go away. That was the hope. Well, so I drive down to the match, which is, you know, an hour and a half away from where I live. And I get there and meds didn't touch the headache and coffee was not working for like, like a caffeine withdrawal kind of thing. That, none of that was working. And so um, anyway, got there, and I had an upset stomach too that came on that morning, and I just wasn't sure what that was all about. That's not normal for me. Like just wasn't feeling 100% by any stretch. Well, so we went and we did the first stage, which I completely bombed. We, you know... Whatever luck we didn't have, we drew the tough stage of the day. And um, it was a long range uh, stage, so 22 long rifle targets out to uh, 270 some yards, if I remember right. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but that seems right. Um, those targets were somewhat generous, you know. Um, the problem was the wind. So this particular thousand yard range uh, this section of this range is like cut super narrow it's probably only 10 yards wide down this this cut through the woods and the wind just plays all kinds of tricks down that power it's not a power line cut it's actually considerably narrower narrower than that it's like the width of a uh, you know like a single or double track kind of trail going through the woods and the wind was, he had some flags down there. The wind was switching back and forth, and it was swirling coming down in through there. Everybody was struggling with that stage, and I was no different. I bombed it. Uh, I'll give credit to Josh, though. I think he got like 7 out of 10 or something like that on it. He was the high score on it. And he actually ended up going on to uh, to win the match, but I bombed that stage, only getting like 3 hits maybe or 4 hits, something like that. Um, 
And uh, so I'm like, that's the way I started out the day, right? Like headache, stomach ache, bombing a stage. So like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what am I even doing here today? It's just be like that sometimes, you know, like you can't, you can't go into these things like perfect every time. It just doesn't work that way. And despite having good mental attitude and thinking that I was going to pull through and all that kind of stuff. And we get to our second stage. I did okay. Third stage. I did pretty good, but, and the headache was starting to go away, but the stomach was actually getting worse. And it just was like swirling and turning. And I couldn't tell whether I was going to be on the toilet or whether I was going to be puking. I didn't know what was going on, but I was like, man, I can't concentrate. This is not fun. So I actually left the match after the third stage. And I was texted the match director on my way out. I'm like, dude, I'm sick. I'm leaving. Just give me a zero for the day. Um, Which that, that doesn't happen very often. I, I think there's one other time these guys in Missouri like to tease me because they, they think it happens all the time. It, It just doesn't, I don't leave matches just randomly. Um, I think this is maybe only the second time I've ever done it. The first time, it was like heat index of a hundred and something, and I was only there to take pictures anyway. I think I left at noon on that particular day, and then this time I left because I was obviously sick and not feeling well and, and couldn't concentrate on what I was doing at all. So anyway... That was my NRL match experience for for this month. I'll try again this next month and you know, hopefully be able to 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 stick it out and and get a good score and maybe even compete with Josh. That'd be cool. Um so so we'll see. Usually I do pretty well at the 22 matches, but I just thought, you know, I don't know what the point of that story was just to say that I'm a wuss and I left early um over a stomach ache, but it was bothering me like I've had upset stomach before. It tends to go away or whatever, you know, take some meds or spend a little time doing some uh, paperwork, if you know what I mean, first thing in the morning, and then it it goes away. But, man, wouldn't go away this time. So there's all that. But a couple things I did want to talk about. Um, So for that match, I also made another mistake. This is a no-no. If you don't know this and you're brand new to shooting, this is a no-no. You never switch your gear the day before a match. Never switch your gear, any part of it, the day before the match. Whatever you've been using and you've been running with, you've been training, just run that in the match. Don't don't switch gears. So I switched uh, my barreled action the day before the match. Um, I'd been running the Voodoo um, Gunworks 22, and I'd been running just the the standard one. Um, By standard, I mean the first gen, the very first model that came out with the factory barrel. And I've been running that for years. Well, I bought the Voodoo 360 off of a guy, um, slightly used. So it's got the 60 degree throw. And uh, I decided, well, how different could it be? Right. So I, I switched that the day before the match. <laughs> I drop it into my same chassis, same scope, everything. All I just did, it was just re-zero. And I was having a little bit of feeding issues here at home. But I thought, it's just how the magazine gets pressed up against the barricade bag. And, you know, as long as I just make sure that I'm not putting any weird pressures into the magazine from the barricade bag, I'm going to be fine. Well, that that was not the case at the match on the clock. I was having all kinds of feeding issues. Like, yeah, just mostly failure to feeds um, because of the magazine. It was, uh, the bullets were were nose diving at one point and then at the next point I, the, the the bolt was sliding over the top of the round and it kind of hitting it on the side and pinching it weird it was a nightmare of feeding issues and man it, the day was not going to turn out well even if I had stayed so I got to figure that out um, I'm told Voodoo's maybe coming out with some some new magazines sometime soon, so that would be cool. I might just wait around for that and see what those mags end up being and then make my decision. Um, but, geez, I was having all kinds of feeding issues, and that was no fun. So for right now, I'm thinking I might have to switch back to my other barreled action because at least I could run it and, you know, have clean feeding issues. Um, you know, I, I seriously doubt that I'm anywhere near burning out a 22 long rifle barrel, but 
man, the accuracy just hasn't been where it should be, in my opinion, with that that other voodoo. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Um, it's been cleaned actually more regular on that 22 long rifle than I do on my center fire guns. Maybe I'm not cleaning it correctly. Maybe I should call up Eric Cortina and see if uh, he's got some tips for me on that. Um, if you've been around for a while, you understand the inside joke there. But um, yeah, not quite sure, but having issues. Um, what else was there? Uh, oh, the fact that it liked the Ely rounds. This new barreled action liked the, the Ely match grade, the black box Ely match better than the red box sk match which was surprising to me because my first my first gen loves the sk red box and shoots it lights out except that thursday when i went out down there to a gadsden with josh and we were shooting around a little bit i couldn't get better than about a two inch group at 100 yards with that thing and that should be sub moa at 100 yards that rifle with that ammo it always has been and then all of a sudden it wasn't um, the problem with the Ely is those rounds will not feed at all. It doesn't matter what I do, old gun, new gun, doesn't matter. Those things nose dive hit the, they get hung up cause they got like a flat nose on them. They just get hung up. They will not feed whatsoever. So again, back to waiting on different magazine, I guess, to see what's going on with that. So that was match experience and new Voodoo 360. Just, uh, it's not the fault of the, of the Voodoo 360, I don't think. It's just the way the magazines interface. I'm just trying to figure out what my what my issues are there. So anyway, I want to take a, just a, a brief pause and, and say that this, um, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coltec. Use code PRN. 10 for 10% off of your order at Coltec. When you go there, they've got some really cool new products you guys might want to check out. They've got a very sweet binocular chest rig that's like this magnetic, like quick closure opening thing, super quiet um, to, to open and close. No sound whatsoever because it's like magnetic. It doesn't snap because it's like covered in uh, this like rubberized coating. Super cool. And then they've got these little pouches that will attach to the outside of the of the bino chest rig that you can put, you know, medical gear in or a kestrel or any number of other things. Um, they've got, and speaking of medical pouches, they've got their new sear sack, which is like a, a small medical pack, almost looks like a fanny pack, but designed specifically for, for, for medical gear, you know, so that's pretty cool. Got some new products. I just talked to Dustin actually today, the day of recording this, and he was telling me about uh, a couple of secret new projects coming up uh, for products. They've got a lot coming, guys. Like Coltec is a company of new products. They love keeping things fresh and active, and man, I love that. And so anyway, this this episode is brought to you by Coltec. Again, PRN10 to save 10% off. Go give them some love over there and... Um, yeah, that, that would be awesome. So now back to the show. Um, next thing I think we've got, let's see. Oh yeah. Uh, I've got a Remington 700 started at, this is a, this is a new build. Um, it, it was a, uh, it was a Remington 700 SPS, I believe, uh, 223. And it was just a safe queen for me. It's been sitting there for years in the safe, like literally. I, I rarely use it. Sometimes just get it out to plink with. I've never hunted with it. I've never done anything with it. It just sits there. And um, I've, I've recently been getting into like subsonic, suppressed, short barrel, um, you know, bolt action rifle. I just think they're, I think it's a cool, very capable, especially here on my, my property, like the max distance that I have here on my property is about 135 yards. And I have, you know, like raccoons and coyotes and things like that. My wife just got some chickens and we don't want them to get nabbed. And so I've been kind of like keeping an eye out for critters. And of course I like night vision. And so all of those things work together to have this Remington SPS 223 turned into a uh, 300 blackout. And so um, I had Ryan Hunt of Hunt's Long Range spin me up a, a nice barrel, big thick boy, um, and uh, and put it onto that action. And uh, I dropped it into a McMillan tactical stock that I had. 
and it's kind of heavy right now and i'm not so sure i went with a 16 inch barrel because i needed to keep it you know all legal length i'm not ready to sbr it yet or anything like that but um so kept it you know full rifle length for now um i'm not so sure that that with the extra length of that barrel and the suppressor i'm not so sure that it's not speeding up to supersonic on me because it's not as quiet as I really thought it should be. Um, and at first I was like, ah, maybe it's, maybe it's just some hot rounds or whatever, but I, you know, I pulled some bullets and I weighed powders and it's like about 10 grains, which is pretty common, I think for, for 300 blackout, uh, subsonics. And, you know, so it's not that. And I put them through, I put the same rounds through a 16 inch barrel AR with the same suppressor on it. And it sounds quieter to me. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I think the barrel is, and the pressures or whatever, are speeding that up. So I think I'm going to take it back to Ryan uh, here eventually. Um, we'll turn it into a pistol, like with a pistol brace, or I'll SBR it. Um, you know, fill out all that paperwork and blah, 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 which I hate to have to do. You know, NFA can kiss my tail. They shouldn't exist, whatever. Blah. Anyway, um... I think I I think I'll cut it down to probably 12 inches, and then run the suppressor. That'll definitely keep it su uh, subsonic with that, with those bullets, and um, and then I'm hoping that it'll be just a little bit quieter. So, anyway, it's been super fun. Um, I put a, a an IR laser on the uh, Picatinny rail under the front of that <laughs> that stock. And uh, my son and I were schwacking a little six-inch uh, Ipsic target out here at about 105 yards with it in pitch darkness, you know, just with nods and an IR laser. And uh, does it pretty quiet. And so, yeah, any coyotes or, or foxes or, you know, anything that tries to steal the wife's chickens is going to have a rude awakening. So that's been kind of a fun new toy. I think I might like to put it into a, uh, like some sort of a side folder chassis, you know, maybe like an MDT LSS or something like that with a side folder. And I'll put a, you know, um, like a, a pistol grip, or not grip, um, a pistol brace on the end, um, so that we can, uh, you know, so that it can be a pistol instead of a, a rifle. Um, yeah, that, I think that's, other than that, I mean, it's really just as a property defense gun, you know, or a, a varmint gun or something like that. You could hunt with it. I mean, get the right bullets for that, you know, with 300 blackout and something that'll expand well. Um, and I think that would be a, a really good, you know, close range deer gun. I do have a, a video idea where I'd like to just really stretch out some subsonic 300 blackouts. Like, obviously, you know, we lob our 22 long rifle bullets out to 500 yards nowadays. So why not 300 blackout out of a bolt action? So I've got a, I've got a mind to do a video on that coming up as well. That should be, that should be somewhat fun. I think anyway, I don't know if it'd be fun. You guys can comment and let me know if you think a 300 blackout subsonic long range video would be fun just to see what it's capable of. Um, you know, maybe we can <clears throat> try to shoot it through something that will explode. That'd be kind of fun to do too. Um, what else we got? Uh, oh, yeah, kind of the last thing. Well, not the last thing. Next to last thing. I've got a 6 arc build, a 6 ARC build coming up. Uh, Proof is uh, sponsoring that by giving me a barrel. And so when that video drops, it actually is going to drop on Saturday. I'm not sure exactly when this podcast will come up, but um, Saturday the 27th. What's today? 25th, so 6th, 7th, yeah, like 27th of August. That video should drop on the first part, part one of the 6 arc build. And I, actually, I'll show you guys in here. So um, I don't know what part of this or what angle you'll be able to see this guy. Uh, but anyway, it's just a, a fairly standard AR. It's going to be like a Franken gun. I've got the Spikes Tactical um, Crusader lower down here that started out as just a strip lower still got the uh the magpul mo grip on it i dropped a rise armament trigger in it which is about a three pound three and a half pound very very crisp very short pull which is nice i went with a faxon uh upper 
this is currently stripped. It's just kind of sitting on here right now. I got to put my forward assist in. I got to put the dust cover on and those sorts of things. I've got the uh, 6.5 Grendel Type 2 uh, bolt there for it, which is what I need for the, the 6 arc. Uh, that is from Faxon. Of course, we've got, well, so on the butt, you know, we've got the PRS light. Uh, stock. I might change that to B5 systems here yet. I'm just finding maybe I need a little bit more adjustability. So there's that. But we've got the proof uh, six arc barrel here. So this should be this should be a lot of fun. And I, I'm I know this barrel's going to hammer because proof barrels do hammer. I've, I haven't ever had a bad one. I haven't heard of a bad one. So whatever they're doing over there for their barrels, they're doing it right in my opinion. Doing the catalyst arms fast track handguard here because it's got arca milled into the bottom of it already so the entire length of the handguard has arca swiss milled into the bottom of it which i love so i can just attach it right into a, a tripod or i can attach my bipod I, excuse me my bipod right on the front and uh, that should be good um yeah, it's, it all sounds good to me. I mean, the only thing that I might change uh, immediately besides that buttstock to a B5 systems, like I say, is maybe I might switch that rise trigger. I've got another, uh, you know, more of a, of a personal defense AR all set up uh, that I dropped my trigger tech competition trigger into like AR competition trigger or whatever. And it's actually pretty lightweight pull to be kind of a tactical run and gun sort of rifle. I just feel like it's not as safe as I want it to be. Like, I feel like if I just even bump that trigger, it's gonna go off. I'm okay with that in a precision long range rifle that I'm just kind of like very deliberate and setting up for these stages and things like that. Um, so I might switch the trigger to the trigger tech in here um, and see, see what we get as far as that's concerned. As far as an optic on it, I'm still undecided what I'm going to run. I'm sure it'll be, it'll probably be in the 3 to 18 range, something like that. Um, might put, um, might put a Zeiss on it, the S5. Um, might put my, uh, might put my Zico 4 to 20 on it, something like that. Or maybe a Bushnell XRS, like 3 to 21 something like that uh, on it for an optic. But that part is undecided as of yet. Part two of that video is going to be kind of finishing this out, getting it all put together, and then uh, getting it out to the range and, and putting some, some rounds down range. Because I'd, I'd really like to just see what the capabilities of the 6ARC are. And then a third kind of, it won't be a part three, but it'll be a, a comparison video of it after that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a versus video between the 6mm arc and the 6.5 Grendel. I'll kind of do a what's better, you know, versus video. So that that's coming up too. That should be, that should be pretty fun. Um, last thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you guys, if you've been around this channel for a while, you know I am a Terminus fan, Terminus Actions fan. So um, Joel Russo over there has... Uh, sent me out a 223 bolt for my Zeus action and um, I've got a barrel that was a pre-fit that I'm going to spin on I bought from a buddy for pretty cheap and so uh, now I, I, I've added now 223 to my to my caliber possibilities for the Terminus Zeus action so I now have 223 I have six Creedmoor I have six Dasher I have 6.5 Creed. I've got 308. I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I've got all those options off of one action now. And I can just swap back and forth between all of them very simply. I just love the Terminus Zeus actions. I think they're one of the best ones on the market. So maybe check them out too if you're in the market for a new. And they're not sponsoring the channel at all. I just. If I use a product on the regular and I've come to really depend on it and like it, then I got no problem telling you all about it. So that's the that's the Terminus Zeus actions. I think they're great, and that might be something to check out too. So other than that, guys, um, remember to um, check out the affiliate links that are down below every video. There's some there's some coupon codes down there to save you guys money. And um, if not, like I know there's like a Warren link and a Brownells link and stuff like that. Those particular links 
they don't, I don't think, give you uh, an immediate discount. But if you're looking for something and you use my link, it, does, it doesn't cost you anything more and it supports the channel and helps me continue to, to make uh, content. So consider checking out those affiliate links down below. Uh, again, this particular episode is sponsored by, by Coltac and you can save 10% by using code PRN10 during checkout. Guys, hit that follow button. If you're listening on audio to the podcast, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're almost to 40,000 subscribers. Last time I checked, we're at like, we're just like 15 subscribers shy of 40,000. So that's pretty sweet. I'd like to have a couple more videos uh, this this year, maybe go quote unquote viral and get up to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's pretty, uh, it'd be a pretty aggressive goal for, for that to happen, but I'm always hopeful. So anyway, uh, guys, just want to say thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the videos. Yeah, that's it. Stay tuned for more great videos from Precision Rifle Network. Thanks.